Okay, everyone, so now let's do a little special ranking of all the movies I have seen this year. Plus one little honorable mention right now. Bad days! Entertainment rankings and reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to y'all as the Big D. This time I bring to you a very special ranking of all the movies I've seen in the first half of 2020. With the years finally going to get back on their feet next weekend, I'm glad to hear it. So I'll be getting my chance to see movies like The New Mutants, maybe be on Ted Face some music, we'll see. For now, I'm going to be doing the movies I saw in the first half of this year. I've put an even 2000, 24 flicks. An honorable mention I will bring up will be Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution. I know that came out last year, but it only it wasn't it was only seen in LA and Tokyo, but it didn't come to Netflix until earlier this year. So that's an honorable mention. Plus, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see movies like The Invisible Man, maybe. I know that got good response, so I humbly apologize. So if you are ready. Let's begin. Number 24 is... Like a Boss. Yeah, this was a kind of a down, letdown for me. I mean, while I like the performances we got from Tiffany Hash and Rose Burns, Selma Hayek, eh, kind of this bad... Um, Baddie of a boss, um, I'm gonna say it was factually okay, but this was a comedy, but not much of it made me laugh. There was some of it that kind of freaked me out a little bit, but the movie was still okay in ways, though. So, that's about all I'm going to tell you. Like a boss, it's at the bottom of the chains. And next, number 23 is... Artemis Fowl, I know this film got dissed in one of you, and I completely understand why everybody hated it. I only liked it for certain reasons. If you've not seen my review, check it out. I said this was, I give it three stars. I said it was an okay, good movie. I know it was kind of, you know, well, you probably know what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Little boy who played Artemis wasn't too bad. Some of the cast was hit or miss, but... Well, it was an okay good movie, Armist Fowl was, but that we'll ever see him again, considering this was this, and it came to Disney+. Plus. Okay, number 22 is... The Rim Section. Now, this came out after my big 4 and, well... This was another film that got dissed and what have you. I mean, and the film was a little okay good. I mean, I like Blake Lively, and I thought this was pretty good and what have you in, in some ways because it was like a female James Bond type flick or something like that. But I guess I can understand why people just didn't enjoy much. Only Blake Lively's performance was one thing I liked. Jude Law wasn't too bad. But... Well, you probably already know about this, so rim section, not, not quite too bad, but it could have used a little more spin polish than what have you. Okay, number 21 is... The Lovebirds. Now, this kind of had a little more ups and downs and what have you. Now, I like the foreign performances we got from Itza Ray and Kamal Nanjiani. I just gotta say this was an absolute fun blast, but what they were trying to do, they weren't really thinking much of what have you, what they were doing, but, but still, it proved to be humorous and what have you. And I really thought this was a fun little experience, since this was another flick we were expecting to get in the ears, but because of the pandemic, uh, well, we got it on Netflix. 
But still, not bad of a movie. It was fun. Okay, continuing on. Number 20 is... All the Bright Places. This is another Netflix movie. Um, I, I checked out. Now, I was going to review this, but since my February schedule kind of all well filled up and why I even got so much other stuff in the way, I didn't get a chance. I'm going to tell you, this was a, a pretty good movie in some ways. I love the performances we got from Elle Fanning and... Justice Smith. Of course, you know, the guy from Detective Pikachu. Yeah. Well, story's not too bad. It's based on the book of the same name. About two people, me, and they, well, change each other's lives forever. And they struggle with the emotional and physical scars of their past. Stuff like that. Yeah. They discover that even the smallest places and moments can mean something. So, anyway, that's not too bad of a movie. I liked it for certain reasons, so it's pretty cool and why have you. So, number 19 is... Timmy Failure Mistakes Were Made. Now, I recently watched this, well, earlier this week on Disney Plus to make up for that. I heard it got good reviews and what have you. It's based on the book of the same name. I'm not sure where if we'll get the another one or not, but we'll see, since it did get good response from the critics and what have you. Now, I like the little boy who played the title character, of course. It's about this 11-year-old boy who believes that he is the best detective in town and runs a Agency known as Total Failures with his best friend, an imaginary 1,200-pound polar bear. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. I thought this was pretty good. The funniest, kind, well, it's kind of funny in ways. Uh, I mean, whenever he sees this imaginary polar bear causing an a accident or something, he's like, a that's a demerit. Oh, boy. This movie's absolutely funny. I thought Timmy Failure was pretty good. So, enough said about that. Now, number 18 is... The Way Back. Now, I will say Ben Affleck did an absolute good job in this true story flick. About Jack Cunningham was a big high school basketball phenom who walked away from the game, forfeiting his future. And years later, he reluctantly accepted a coaching job as alma mater. He may get where well, he may get one last shot of redemption, but boy, I gotta tell you, he swears a lot in front of everyone when he forbids something like that around there. The way back's not too bad of a movie. It's got its moments. I thought it was pretty good. Again, Ben Affleck was great. Cast with, the rest of the cast was pretty good. So, that's about it. So, number 17 is... Extraction. Now, I watched this not so long ago, last month on Netflix. I know it's kind of got a little bit, um, kind of close to positive to mixed response from everyone. And I'm going to say it's not too bad. Didn't do a review on it, though. But anyway, Chris Hemsworth stars in this about, about this dude named Tyler Rake, who happens to be a fearless black market mercenary who embarks on the most deadly extraction of his career when he's enlisted to rescue the kidnapped son of an imprisoned international crime lord. Yeah, the film's not too bad. It has some fun action, why have you? It does have a few misses and what have you, but overall, it's not too bad. Maybe not one of the best crims Mr. Chris Hemsworth movies outside of the MCU flicks he did where he played Thor, but still, it's pretty action-packed and what have you. 
So, enough said. Number 16 is... To all the boys, P.S. I still love you. Now, of course, this is the follow-up to To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Now, if you haven't seen my spoiler-free review of it, you might want to check it out. But anyway, I want to say this is another Netflix movie. Actually, this and the next one is a Netflix movie. But uh, let me get to this one. I'm going to say that La Condor, once again, does a great job in playing our main character of Lord Jean again. And Noah Centennial, Jordan Fisher, and Aunt Cathcart. Yeah, I'm going to say this was pretty good. I like this just as much as its predecessor. P P.S. I Still Love You, it's just amazing. It had some pretty fun moments and what have you. I look forward to to uh, the third one when it comes around. So I do know it's got in post production. I believe I may be wrong, but I'm sure they'll get the third one ready for the future. So I look forward to do to the third one when it comes to us. So anyway, P.S. I still love you. I love it. It's a great movie. It's a, it's a pretty good sequel, too. Yeah. Okay. Number... F and now... F number 15 is... The Willoughby's. Now, I was going to review this... But unfortunately, due to some other movies being away, I didn't get a chance. This is a pretty good anime flick. Based on the book of the same name about these children who hatch a sneaky plan to send their selfish parents on vacation and then embark on their own high-flying adventure to find the true meaning of family. Yeah, the film isn't, isn't too bad. The story's pretty good. I love the performances from everyone here that include the cast that include Will Forte, Maya Rudolph, Alessia Cara, Terry Crews, Martin Short, Jane Krakowski, Sean Cullen, and Ricky Gervais, who also happened to be the narrator of the flick. The Will Beast is pretty funny. If you've not seen this, it's pretty good. It's of course like I said in the for the last movie, this is another Netflix film. But anyway, I really think The Will Beast is a fun movie, so if you haven't seen it, I'd say you should give it a try. So anyway, we're getting there. Okay. Number 14 is... Bloodshot. This, unfortunately, was the last movie I went and saw until the pandemic ruined everything for us. I was lucky to have seen it at the last minute. I'm going to say this is kind of an underrated movie, but I really liked it. This is a superhero flick, and I really liked Vin Diesel's performance in this. I mean, it did have a few loops in and what have you with the story and what have you, but even so, I really did enjoy it. And the rest of the cast was pretty good. It was just so cool in what have you. I don't know where if we'll get a sequel or not. If we don't, well, hey, they did a good, it was worth a shot. But anyway, I think Bloodshot's pretty cool. It's a kick-ass flick. I really loved it when I saw it. Alright then. Number 13 is... Scoob. 
Now, this was a nerf flick we were supposed to get, but due to the you-know-why, it got sent to me on demand. And I know a lot of people didn't like this because it didn't have much of a mystery flavor, which I forgot, I kind of forgot to mention about. That was kind of a downside with me on this movie, besides the way Blue Falcon was acting. I really liked, but it was great having... Blue Falcon Dynamo, who may not have been acting like he is in the car in original cartoon, or we see Captain K-Man, voiced by Tracy Morgan, D.D. Skies, who, of course, was part of the Teen Angels, if you've not seen the Captain K-Man, the Teen Angels cartoon, and, uh, let's see, Dick Dashley, voiced by Jason Isaacs, uh, not bad, uh, but not as good as Paul Winchell, though. But I know it was kind of a disappointment by not having much mystery to it and having more of a superhero feel to it. But I liked all the Easter eggs for various Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And I really hope they will try again with the Hanna-Barbera universe. At least we hope. Hopefully we'll have a Space Ghost movie maybe or, I don't know, maybe that new Jetsons movie we've been hearing about. Which um, I, I almost forgot to mention the well, Jetsons, the movie, turned 30 not so long ago this year. I'll try to review that sometime down the road. But anyway, Scoob, well, not bad, but it well, could have used a little more spin polish with mystery flavor, not just superhero stuff, you know. But, yeah, but it still was a fun movie, though. I still like it for certain reasons. So, enough said. Now at the halfway point, number 12 is... The Call of the Wild. Now, uh, this was the first film to be released by what, what was formerly 20th Century Fox, now 20th Century Studios. I am going to say, I really liked this movie for what it was, though I had a little slight nitpick with the CGI and what have you, but overall, I still love the movie for the story, Harrison Ford, lots of other things. If you've not seen my spoiler-free review, check it out. But still, it's not bad of a movie. It's good in some ways, so Call of the Wild, it's pretty good. But that's just from my retros my point of view, but you don't have to take my word for it. Okay. Number 11 is... Hamilton. Now, this, of course, was a recording of this, a live recording of it, which this wasn't supposed to come to... The years until next year, but I'd say they rescheduled and release on Disney Plus since since Lin Manuel Miranda's In the Heights, which was to be released by Warner Bros., had just been rescheduled to next summer. But anyway, I'm gonna say this was this had some pretty good moments. I know a lot of people might feel a little mixed on. The portrayals of the characters, because this was about one of the founding fathers and why have you. Lin Manuel Miranda, I must say, again, was good as the title character of Alexander Hamilton. But it just was a fun experience, because I've never actually taken the time to see a mo movie in the form of a me in the form of an actual musical recording. But it was still good in ways. So please don't be mad. The Hamilton was pretty good. Okay, enough said. It's top ten time. Number ten is... My Spy. I'm gonna say that this was an absolute fun feel flick. This had been delayed so many times, but... If Amazon Prime hadn't picked it up, I wouldn't have gotten a chance to see it. But this movie's kind of a little underrated, since it was supposed to come out last August. It's been rescheduled, so can't pick it much even before the pandemic. Anyway, Dave Bautista, absolutely funny in this. 
And uh, the little girl, played by Chloe Coleman, was pretty good. I also found out she was in the Timmy Failure movie. I almost didn't think it was her until I saw her name in the, in the credits. So, that was pretty cool. Anyway, My Spy is an absolute fun-filled comic adventure flick. I think you should check it out. It's fun. If you got Prime, that is. <laughs> Okay, enough said. Number nine is... Sonic the Hedgehog! Yeah, after I watched this a second time at work, when we were... Well, take a break from doing stuff and what have you. I'm gonna say it was just more fun. Now, I originally gave this film four stars, but it's been changed. Now it's four and a half stars, if you... If you've already seen my spoiler-free review of this earlier this year, just so you know, my score for it's been changed. I'm going to say, I didn't, at first I didn't think I was going to enjoy this, but after, because of the way Sonic looked, but I'm glad the, the, the crew went back and fixed him up, made him look much better. And as for old Jim Carrey, who I didn't see anything good with him in ages, he easily redeems himself, as I didn't think he was going to be a good robotic or not, but it turned out he was good after all. Anyway, and I'm actually happy to hear that they're currently going to be working on a sequel, which will be coming out in 2022. So, I look forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. Since we saw Tails make a cameo at the, um, a mid cred scene, which I didn't bring up in the spoiler-free review, but if you've already seen Sonic the Hedgehog, good. Now you know. And seeing Robotnik now the way he is, all ball, the mustache, all frizzy and what have you, just... Yeah. That's kind of almost what I'd be expecting. But anyway, we'll see what happens for Sonic in the next movie when it comes around. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. It's good. Number eight is... The Five Bloods. Now, I recently watched this on Netflix last month, but I didn't have a ranking for my, for the first half of 2020 rating because I wanted to see this. But anyway, I recently watched this, and I really liked it. Now, of course, this, of course, was directed by Spike Lee. I haven't really taken the time to watch a whole lot of his movies. I have seen some of He Got Game and... Probably something else. I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. But anyway, this was a good movie. I really love the performances we got from the cast. They include Delroy Lindo, Clark Peters, Norm Lewis, and Isaiah Wish, Whit Whitlock Jr. Yeah. And of course, remembering their days in the Vietnam War with their leader played by Chadwick Boseman. I'm just going to say, The Five Bloods is definitely a good movie. That's worth looking into if you've not seen it. I know I haven't reviewed it, but it's a pretty cool movie. I like the atmosphere with being showing off Vietnam War and what have you. Yeah, real good. So anyway, Five Bloods, worth looking into if you haven't. Number seven is... Trolls World Tour. I'm gonna say I really love this just as much as the first one. Don't don't hate me for it, but I can say it was just so much fun. I love the performances from the whole cast. I mean, we got Anna Kendrick, Justin Timberlake, all the others back, plus additional voices for voicing the various characters around the various music worlds. Especially in the country world, where I couldn't believe that the their sheriff was voiced by Kelly Clarkson. Really cool. I'm gonna say the music is real good and what have you. I think Trolls World Tour is an absolute cute movie, and I think it's really fun. Probably not the best one though, but still, it manages to do its extreme best though. <laughs> yep. Okay, that about covers it. Let's keep going. Number six is... I 
I still believe. Now, this was actually the next to last movie I got to see in theaters before you do you know what? I'm gonna say this is definitely pretty good. As much as I liked I can only imagine this still this film proved to be a real good movie. I like KJ Appa's portrayal of Jeremy Camp and the rest of the cast is pretty good. Brit Robertson, Nathan Parsons, Gary Sinise, heck, even Shania Twain. Wow. If I like to see her on her you know, on the big screen, I mean, even though this was her second movie, I know she did some movie with John Travolta before that, which was a big bust, but however, I loved her performance, but it was Mr. Appa who did an absolute great job on this. I mean, I really loved it, I still believe. And, well, again, K.J. Appa did a great job in playing Jeremy Camp. I, don't mind me sounding like a broken record, but even so, I think it's a good movie. Yeah. So, for the now for the big one. Number five is... Onward. Well, not really the best from Disney and Pixar, but still it proves to be fun. After I revisit on Disney Plus not so long ago in my Disney Pixar marathon, which the ranking will be coming up later on this month, so be on the lookout for it. I've already done it on Letterboxd, but I'm, I'm going to be... But the video will be coming up at the end of the month. Tom Holland and Chris Pratt are exceptionally good in playing the the brothers here the two main characters i think this is so cool this i i think the atmosphere was pretty good this was just a whole lot of fun we got uh octavia spencer and julia louis dreyfus they were real good their characters were were really good but anyway, I liked the performances we got from Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. They were exceptionally real good. It's onward. And it may have had a short stay but in the theaters, but got sent to DVD and into Disney Plus instantly because of the you-know-what. But, hey, it was good to relive it on there, okay? So that about covers it. Number four is... My Hero Academia, Heroes Rising. Now, this was released in Japan last year, but, however, it got released to us this year, so I'm counting it as a movie I saw that is from this year, okay? Now, this was what got me into watching the anime. Well, I never had watched the sh this since its debut, and I've not seen the first My Hero Academia flick, but I've heard of the... The anime and the franchise, the well, the manga. Well, I've not looked at them, but I really say this is what got me interest, introduced and in, interested in this series. I really love the characters in My Hero Academia. It's just so much fun, and learning about the uh, what these here characters have, the quirks. Yeah, that was really something. Now, I know somebody didn't get a chance... Well... <laughs> yeah. Now, who my favorite character in this was? I have to say Izuku. The, the dude with the, the green hair and what have you. Yeah. Or, or was it... No, wait a minute. I think it was... Kind of a blue greenish hair. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, but anyway, I think my Hero Academia Heroes Rising was absolutely good. I got to see it for what it is. Oh wow, this was so mind blowing. The first ever anime flick I have ever went to see in the theaters. So I really think this was a fun experience. 
I do hope we'll get another one, and hopefully another season of it, which, um, of course, we'll probably get word from Funimation, the company that produced this series, sooner or later. Okay, now for the final three. Number three is... Bad Boys for Life. Yes. The first movie I went to see this year came out a week before my big 4-0, and I'm going to say this was a fun thrill ride. A good way to conclude this year trilogy. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence were absolutely great. I'm going to say this was much better than the second one. And, well... There's just so much to say about Bad Boys for Life, which, of course, is now playing on stars. It just now came to the channel. But anyway, this was just so much fun. The action, everything. If you've not seen my spoiler-free review, you should check it out. I think this was just a fun-filled buddy cop flick. Yeah. And I kind of also liked it a little bit... Over the first one, no offense, but this was probably the biggest one of them all. So, Bad Boys for Life, definitely a good movie. Enough said. And now, of the final two, this was a tough decision. So, I'm probably going to get controversy for the final two. Okay, here we go. Number two is... Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, which that happens to be coming up on HBO. And of course, it's on HBO Max as well, if you haven't gone to see it or if you don't have it. Anyway, now this was, I originally did have it as number one, but unfortunately I changed it at the last minute. I was afraid I would probably get controversy. But yeah, no surprise that a superhero movie or a comic book flick is not number one. But that was the first half. It could have been better if the pandemic have come along. But anyway, I love Margot Robbie's portrayal as Harley Quinn. Absolutely great. I absolutely did enjoy this movie for because it had some real kick-ass chick, chick fun and what have you. And I think this was a bit of an improvement over Suicide Squad, even though I did like Robbie and that one. But, I gotta say, it was just so much fun. I, I, I gotta tell you. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Ewan McGregor as Black Mask, that, they were real good. Oh, the whole cast was pretty good. I really did enjoy it. If you've not seen my spoiler-free review of it, you should check it out. Birds of Prey, definitely pretty fun, why have you? I thought it was just a lot of kick-ass fun. Okay, now about covers it. Number one is... Stargirl. Yeah, this... I had to see it since I got Disney Plus, and when this came on there earlier this year, I thought this might be good. It's based on the young adult novel. While I didn't do a review of it, I I should have after I watched it, but I it would have put it into my plans and what have you for my other reviews. But don't worry, I am going to try to make up for lost time on that and review it. But what can I say? I loved Star Girl. This was just amazing. Whew. I just gotta say, this was just so good. Good. I loved the performances from everyone, especially Grace Vanderwall, who played the title character. She was so good, and I especially loved the music in this. Her perform, her singing in this was just so incredible. I loved it. Graham Vercher, who played Leo in this, the guy who actually becomes friends with Star Girl, yeah, was pretty good too. And I just gotta say, this was just so incredible. It was, I don't know, the best coming of age flick 
I, for well, young coming of age, like I have seen in the last few years. Anyway, Star Girl was just so amazing. I do love it. So sorry to disappoint everybody, but I think Star Girl has surpassed Birds of Prey at the last minute in what have you when I was doing this. So that's why I changed it. So please, no no hard feelings, everyone. But anyway, Star Girl is my number one flick of the first. Sad movies I saw in the first half of 2020. So, what do you think of this list? What's your favorite flick of... What's your top favorite flick of... The first half of 2020? If you if you have one, you can give me your top five. You can maybe give me your five... Top five. Whatever, it's your choice. So, anyway. Tell me... Tell me what they are in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well. And be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a re-review of the horror suspense flick Prom Night. Yes. Alright, thanks for watching. Now, if you liked this, you can check out these other great vids I recently did. I'm going to go ahead and... Bring these all up and what have you. <laughs> okay. First up in the upper in the upper left hand corner is my most viewed video for this month so far, and that would be my review of Harley Davidson in the Marlboro Man, which has already been doing so well. And in the upper right hand corner is my uh, Excuse me, everyone. Let me see if I can figure some. Hang on a second. Please stand by. Sorry about that. Let me try this again. The upper left-hand corner is my review of Harley Davidson, The Marble Man, I mentioned, which is my most viewed video of this month so far. The upper right-hand corner is my review of the original Psycho, which is celebrating 60 years. And the bomb, and if you want family friendly stuff, go to the bomb left hand corner for my recent spoiler free review of the new Disney Plus movie Magic Camp. And the bomb right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you want more rank, if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.